Hello and welcome to Creating a Human Rights Culture, which aims to promote a lived awareness of the interdependency and indivisibility of human rights principles in our minds, hearts, and bodies, that is, dragged into our everyday lives. What, after all, is freedom of speech to a person who is homeless and lives in a world at war? Therefore, it is dedicated ultimately to the application of the Human Rights Triptych, which in brief consists of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at its center, the Conventions, that is International Treaties on the right, and Implementation Measures on the left. Hello, I'm Joseph Ronka, and welcome to another episode of Creating a Human Rights Culture, which calls for a lived awareness of human rights principles in our minds and our hearts, especially here and integrated into our everyday lives. Today we're going to talk about the United States report to the United Nations on torture. Of course, there are other reports by other countries. All you have to do is go Google on the Saudi Arabia's report, on Iran's report, whatever, and you'll be able to find them. We're emphasizing the United States now because we live in the United States and this is our primary audience. But you really should look at those other reports as well. Uh, when I was in Geneva, I was at the hearing for Iran before the Human Rights Council, and the council said, is it true that you cut off hands for stealing? They were after Iran for something like 20 minutes until they finally admitted, yes, we do. We do it on the third time they steal and if they express no remorse. And the council, of course, said that needs to stop and um, things still go on, so la-di-da, let's just invade Iran. It doesn't work like that. Violence will not end more violence. Anyway, I'm here today with Martha Spiegelman. Uh, she's the chapter coordinator for Amnesty International, and Mohammed El Ghadi. He is a torture survivor himself. 180 days in a Sudanese prison. He's also adjunct professor at Springfield College. Uh, where I teach also, I mean, a professor. And um, um, for our viewers out there, I would like you to know that this is being shot during what is called Torture Survivors Week. And June 26 has been designated by the United Nations as Torture Survivors Day. Now, unbeknownst to many of you out there, the United States of America comes out with a report to what is called the United Nations Monitoring Committees on CAT, C-A-T, which is the acronym for the Torture Human Rights Convention. Now, all conventions are actually treaties. Um, they have judicial force, and treaties, once ratified according to Article 6 of the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution, must be implemented and the judges bound thereby. So we ratified it and it must be in implemented. It is a fundamental document of the human rights triptych and the United States ratified it in 1994 under the Clinton administration. And around that time even, President Clinton, to give further impetus to the convention, issued an executive order, I believe it was 1998, that said it should be implemented, along with other conventions we signed, uh, ratified on racism and civil and political rights, but we can't do everything. Now, given the prison in Iraq, Abu Ghraib, reports of extraordinary rendition, reportedly torture in Afghanistan, you, the viewer, may find it difficult to believe but during the 1990s and even the 80s, in a notorious case precedenting United States federal court decision referred to as Filartiga v. Pena, where a police officer, Pena Aralia in Paraguay, was convicted of torturing a 17-year-old, Yovalita Filartiga in Paraguay. For those of you who like, like to see films, they did a film on this called One Man's War. I think it was HBO, and it starred Anthony Hopkins, if you'd like to see this sort of stuff. This occurred in Paraguay. We can't get into everything. But Pina Arala was convicted in a federal court. It was a major landmark decision. 
where they referred to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as customary international law which all nations must abide. We used to say, I don't know if you remember, but I remember I was coordinator for Amnesty for a while in the 80s, we would say there will be no safe haven for torturers in the United States. And um, we were a leader back then. Uh, perhaps it was a legacy of the Carter administration. I'm not really sure. But we really were major leaders, in my view and view of many others. But something happened over the years, and now we have a president, Trump, who has supported waterboarding, a heinous practice, I think. And President Trump said, torture works. Anyway, we can't do everything in these two brief episodes, so we've collectively decided to discuss here the United States report, which I have right here, and you could get it on the internet, well, whatever, and um, to the uh, human rights on the United Nations Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment or Punishment. And as the producer of the show, I ordered my colleagues to discuss the report. Failure to do so would result in a hundred lashes of a wet noodle, and you would be tortured for that reason. Anyway, every five years, governments who ratified the CAT, Convention Against Torture, as we have, must submit a report. Now, the most recent report that we have is the one submitted under the Obama administration, in 2014, which for all intents and purposes, I think will suffice for now. We are going to have a sequel. Please stay tuned because the five-year follow-up report should come out in 2019. They're usually a few months late, sometimes a year late, but after it comes out, we're going to meet again and see how you guys are doing. Um, so we have divvied up this 30-page report. Um, each of us roughly taking a third of it and what we think are substantive issues addressed um, by the uh, Human Rights Committee and these are called uh, concluding observations by the committee. Um, don't be so quiet, any comments? Because I will go first, <laughs> then Martha, okay, and then okay. Mohammed. okay? Maybe so I, just go ahead. Maybe sure. I would just say one thing. Sure. You, you put us, you Joe, put us onto this and I looked it up, and I guess all of us looked at the Amnesty, what you call the shadow report. Yes. Amnesty International has put out a couple of reports about this report and um, emphasizes and agrees with the recommendations of the Committee Against Torture of the United Nations, which is what we're talking about, what the recommendations of the committee against torture has recommended that the United States do. And Amnesty's documents, uh, as I say, agree with all of these recommendations. Okay. Um, agree. Is, maybe it's a polite word to sort of keep it after them. <laughs> They're saying, you know, well, let's make sure, make sure we do that. Okay. That's, uh, thank you for that. Um, okay. So um, I will talk about the first one-third of the uh, uh, concluding observations. Now, often these reports start off with making the country feel good. So the uh, Human Rights Monitoring Committee did just that. And remember, this was under the Obama administration. And their aim is to engage in a creative dialogue, um, not really to get on their case, um, but in some ways they do, but they still want to resolve issues and then, and then move forward. So, you know, you say positive things, but then you say areas of concern. So some of the things they said um, were that um, uh, the UN, their, the committee, well, actually the UN, we can say, uh, um, curtly, whatever, that the, uh, they praise the United States for saying that a time of war does not suspend the operation of the convention. So even you're at war, you don't torture. They also like that the United States uh, promulgated, fancy legal term, I guess, of national standards to prevent, detect, and respond to sexual abuse 
in confinement facilities. They also praised the Supreme Court decision in Graham v. Florida 2011 decision, which prohibited sentences of life imprisonment without parole for children convicted of non-homicidal offenses. I have to say here, I read once in the Catholic Reporter that 2,500 children um, in the uh, mid-2000s were um, facing um, life imprisonment without parole, which, get this guys, is 10 times higher than all the other five countries mm. combined. Oh. I read that in the National Catholic Reporter. So there was something like uh, three, 250 or so in the other five countries. So it was a serious problem. So finally, uh, we got to it. Okay, so let's um, get into its concerns. The this life, uh, life without parole, sent life sentence without parole. The I'm, children. I, yeah, I'm quite sure, like 20, what's, what's it said, like 23 hours a day in a solitary confinement. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, well, solitary confinement is in addition to this yeah. as, another, as another issue. Wow. Uh, some people are in prison, where kids were in prison without solitary confinement, but without uh, parole, yeah. okay? And solitary confinement is another issue, and it's absolutely yeah. horrendous. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, teach po I, teach po I teach policy. And mm -hmm. The use of metaphors that people use to get things done, they say things like, we have to break them down. Right. What a stupid metaphor. Yeah. Who are you breaking? Yeah. I mean, what's going on? It's a kid. Yeah. But anyway, um, s sad stuff. Don't cry, Martha. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I thought, <laughs> okay. Um, so, the so the first thing that they, uh, the committee said, they had a number of concerns. And I just kind of picked and chose, um, can't do everything. So they said that they did not like the fact that the United States has said that psychological torture can be called prolonged mental harm. It's torture. They'd like them to change the language. So we'll see in 2019 what they did hmm. under the Trump administration. The committee also expressed grave concern over extraordinary rendition, people just go to the country, take someone out and put them in a prison, a secret detention, enforced disappearances of individuals suspected of being involved in terrorism-related crimes, and the interrogation program operated by the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. The committee also expressed concern, well actually they called it regrets, that regarding all those issues, the United States has provided only scant information on their network of secret detention facilities and their abusive interrogation techniques such as waterboarding. Now the viewers may wish to know that there is another human rights convention called the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances, which is one of the latest conventions, I believe, which the committee urged the United States to ratify. As I understand it, we haven't even signed it. Once you sign something, you'll consider it in their legislative bodies, and then when you ratify it, it becomes law according to um, Article 6, like I mentioned. It also expressed concern about the absence of criminal prosecutions, maybe I should say persecutions, well, prosecutions over alleged destruction of torture evidence by the Central Intelligence Agency. What example for this? Do what you have an example for um, this kind of methods? No, evidence of, what do they mean by that? Um, well, there was a lot of evidence that the United States had tortured in Abu Ghraib. No, no, no I'm sorry. What I meant, uh, destroying the evidence, what they mean by that, like in the report, like they destroy the evidence. Um, like well, it's in here. I could go back oh, and read oh, it. Okay. Um, um, uh, basically, you know, nowadays you just press a button, uh, there goes, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. years of evidence. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure. No, because this is very interesting when the United Nations assign uh, human rights uh, uh, 
uh, investigator for Sudan in 1995, where the place I was in prison on yes. torture, what they did, so this is exactly, they destroyed the place completely, and they, overnight, they built uh, a new building, saying, hey, no, this is uh, just a, a, a company related to one of the government. All the cells who were here, demolished. This is why now torture survivor requesting the international community to have that place as a museum for torture. Oh. So, yeah, in Sudan, yeah. They, so they, they have it now as a museum. No, no they, they, we I'm are sorry, requesting. My brain. Yeah. Well, no, no, me, my language. Okay. Uh, so we are requesting, we put announcement for the whole world, that place, because many companies are coming to buy, say, like, hey, that is belong to the victim of torture who died in that place or who survived. That will be a museum of torture yes. in Sudan to be an education tool for everyone. It should be, like the Skull yeah. Museum. So this came yeah. to my mind when they destroyed and demolished the evidence of torture. So it could be here. Uh, Abu Ghraib. Abu Ghraib. Yeah. Abu Ghraib. Yeah. Abu Ghraib. That. Uh, Guantanamo Bay yeah. could be also those, another uh, yeah, example. Yeah. Th 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 those those um, films that were made at Abu Ghraib have yes. disappeared. I mean, they yeah. must exist out in cyberspace somewhere, but. But as far as um, being documents, mm -hmm. you know, in a book someplace that people can open up and say, oh, look what happened. No, that doesn't exist anymore. So the, yeah. a lot of the, lot of the um, evidence. Yeah, destroys this way. And there, and there's, so it's good and to there see is, this yeah, and there, and there is, documents. there is this claim that all of this has to be secret. It has to be secret. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in the part of the report that I was reading, mm -hmm. There is a recommendation that that secrecy be eliminated <clears throat> and that the information be declassified so that victims of torture mm. yes. can go to counsel, mm. legal counsel, and get some kind of uh, reparation. Yeah. But they never would be able to do that yeah. if the evidence is just secret. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, like hasn't. Our or government, or any government heard of transparency, <coughs> telling the truth? I mean, I don't, uh, I don't get it. And you're torturing people. Yeah. Well, you don't. Well, you don't want anybody to know that you're torturing I mean, somebody. <laughs> I know. I, I know. We got We have a lot, lot to do. There's just so much yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just go on, um, and then we'll move on. I just want to finish. Um, okay. The committee also. Um, um, welcomed the fact that the United States, uh, their Department of Defense, conducted thousands of investigations, prosecutions, and disciplinary proceedings against military personnel for abuses. However, it regrets that the United States provided only minimal information on that minimal information on the number of investigations, prosecutions, disciplinary proceedings, let alone the disciplinary sanctions imposed by the perpetrators in the military. So again, they're moving towards a creative dialogue. Okay, um, you've done some, but you, come on, you gotta do more, okay? Uh, finally, there's Guantanamo Bay. I'm sure our viewers heard about that. And the committee said that the United States should cease the use of indefinite detention without charge for individuals suspected of terrorism and even terrorism-related activities. They should put an end to forced feedings of detainees on hunger strikes, and they should investigate all allegations of detainee abuse, appropriately prosecute those responsible and ensure mm -hmm. effective redress for victims. So that's my part. Yeah. Um, I think we should just move on. Anyone okay. have any any comments or concerns or? Well, we'll just move on, Martha. You yeah. Well, in in okay. in the part that I was um, assigned. Uh, oh come on. <laughs> Order. No, you the, weren't. The, the I part that I that I, that I, volun that I, I volunteered to read. Yeah. Um, it, it continues a little bit with the Guantanamo situation, mm -hmm. and one, <clears throat> I'll just make one comment about um, um, returning uh, detainees to another country or sending them to another country. And uh, the committee said that the, it's not enough to take the word 
of the other country that we will not torture them if you send them back to us. That's not enough. If there is a record of torture in that country, then it's not, you're not allowed to send a Guantanamo uh, <laughs> detainee to that country. So, for instance, there's a good record in Saudi Arabia of torture, and it would be wrong for the United States to send any detainee to, 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 to Saudi Arabia for that reason. Hmm. And it even goes so far as to say that, <clears throat> I don't know how this, maybe you know, Joe, I don't know how this would work, but it even goes so far as to say, if you send a detainee to another country like France, and then France in turn sends the detainee to Saudi Arabia, mm. the original country, the United States, is still at fault for, for doing that. So I don't know how, oh, I don't know how don't you, know either, yeah, I don't know how um, that these can be enforced, you know, it's just, it's just a, a difficulty. You know, I have to say, it's one sort of criticism of the UN, it's hard to enforce things and Im implement them. Right. But, um, I mean, I just think it's great, because at least you have the countries talking, yeah. and then you get the mm. information out. Yeah. And if the uh, world knows about this, you know, mm. the governments must abide by the will of the people. So the will of the people says this shouldn't be tolerated, and then they yeah. ought to follow suit. Well, that's my take. Yeah, well, I, I agree. The, the, the discussions are extremely important, and they, and they highlight, they bring light to uh, critical issues and critical behaviors by different countries and different actors uh, on the international scene. So I think it's very important that all of this uh, sees the light of day through discussions at least. And the United Nations mm -hmm. is, is essential. I mean, I don't know how we would be where we are today without the United Nations. Well, I think the UN has all sorts of influence, unbeknownst to us. Mm -hmm. Right, Equal right. pay for equal work. It's all yeah. in the Universal Declaration yeah. of Human Rights. We discovered women in 1976. Remember that? <laughs> the International Year of the Woman. And hey, we don't have to get into that one. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> Another time. Okay. Although women come up in, in some okay, of these Okay, so keep also. on going, Martha. Yeah. But, um, so another, another uh, recommendation regarding uh, military um, interrogations or military treatment of, uh, of detainees uh, or other sorts of uh, suspects in their hands is, th this kind of surprised me, uh, something called separation techniques. And what separation techniques mean, I thought it meant, oh, you, you, you're, you're separated from somebody, from a person. No, it means separation from the physical environment hmm. so that it is improper to use things like blindfolds and earplugs and other sensory impediments on detainees hmm. because it has an effect, a mental effect on them because they're separated from sensory cues, sensory, the, the environment around them. And they also must be accorded a minimum, and this is pretty minimal, a minimum of four hours of continuous sleep in every 24 hours. Yeah, I read that, yeah. So, yeah. so that's also something uh, sleep deprivation would also uh, cause mental problems in the individual. So and these are all, you know, you don't think of these necessarily as torture, but I like to, I like to state for the record the complete title of this convention. It's the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel and Inhuman and Degrading Treatments and Punishment. Right. Yes. So if it's cruel or inhuman or degrading, that is also uh, the, the country yeah. that is part of this convention is also uh, supposed to abide by all of, all of those provisions. So um, I thought that was interesting that the sensory deprivation came in here. Um, other parts of the uh, of what I read on this report are uh, related to prison conditions, prison prisoners in U.S. jails and prisons, and uh, solitary confinement comes up. Yeah. 
and solitary confinement should be according to the committee should be very very limited and in fact it recommends this is never done i think it recommends that when solitary confinement is imposed that there should be judicial review of whether or not it is justified. I don't think mm -hmm. there's ever any judicial review on solitary confinement. I think it's all in the hands of the local officials in jails and prisons. So solitary confinement should yes. be very limited. It should not be used for juveniles, for pregnant women, for women with uh, young children, or for uh, individuals who are mentally in incapable or mm. or their men mental uh, capabilities are reduced so it shouldn't be used in any of those cases but it has been and it is yeah. still I and remember did that did that report say it's been disproportionately used against minorities it didn't Blacks say Latinos. it didn't say so that in the report I don't that's, said that. that's in a different uh, article i think yeah. article 27 oh okay, okay. we'll uh, talk about uh, that police uh, brutality there okay. yeah. and and then uh, there are also problems, uh, everybody knows about these problems, about um, violence in prisons, uh, violence between prisoners, violence by the staff, the personnel against prisoners. And uh, again, the committee urges that all acts of violence, including sexual violence, not acts, but reports, whether or not the act actually took place. If there is a report of violence, including sexual violence, it should be impartially and immediately uh, reviewed. And uh, if there are any culprits to be uh, taken, taken action against, that should happen mm -hmm. very promptly. And they, and they should be removed from staff positions. So those are... Um, those are some of the uh, problems with prisons. And then all deaths of prisoners or detainees while in custody need to also be promptly reviewed and investigated. And that's very mm. rarely done, very rarely. I think it would happen if it was uh, some kind of high profile. We want to wrap up. We have seven seconds. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Martha and Mohammed, for your input. We're going to continue this in part two. So um, hope you'll tune in again. So uh, take care of yourself, everyone, and take care of others as needs be.